Hello, this is Matthew Mead and in this video I will highlight the main steps and considerations when configuring Smart Search 2. Smart Search 2 enables operators to search through their video for objects such as vehicles and humans, making their investigations faster and more efficient. The first thing when enabling Smart Search 2 is to ensure that the time of all of the devices are synchronized. Network Time Protocol, or NTP, is the easiest way to synchronize the time on all of your devices. You can configure your server as a time source, or alternatively, select another source. The Time Synchronization menu allows you to configure your NTP settings and displays the difference in between your devices and the NTP source. This is really great for verifying your settings. The next step is to configure Smart Search 2. There are a few things to note. We support almost all models of Axis cameras, but the newer the technology, the better the performance will be. Smart Search 2 will also require additional storage to save the associated metadata, and the more movement within the scene, the greater the storage requirement. We don't recommend you using Smart Search 2 on scenes that are busy or with fast movement, such as main roads. For these scenarios, we recommend one of our partner solutions. The first step is to enable the cameras that you are interested in. It is not worth enabling Smart Search on cameras where it will provide no benefit. For example, on cameras that are recorded by an alarm or that are in a restricted area with restricted access, such as a safe room, or, mentioned earlier, if they are very busy scenes. The next step is to decide whether or not to enable background server classification. Note, this uses your recording server to continually classify the content of your video, which in turn will reduce the time taken when you perform a search. However, recording and other operations are prioritized so, background server classification will only provide a benefit if there are sufficient resources available. A dial is provided to give you an indication as to how the server is managing with the background server classifications. These dials will change depending upon the scene content, but if they are constantly read with a low classification figure that doesn't improve, then this is an indication that the server has insufficient resources. Remember, it's not critical to enable this feature, as the server will classify when you perform a search, but if it is enabled, your searches will be faster. The next option to configure is the scene filters. Here, you can filter out data based on the size and duration, as well as the area. The area filter is important for reducing the generated data, and in this case, I'm removing the constant stream of traffic that is in the background of this scene. Next, we have the settings related to storage. This is where you can select where you want to store your data and how much space it should occupy. This should be used to ensure that the storage allocated for your search data does not reduce the storage allocated for your video recording. Finally, you can get more help from the manual by clicking on the link. I hope this video has helped explain how to configure Axis Camera Station Smart Search 2. Thank you for watching.